In this screencast, we're going to talk about some aspects of physics, and I'm sorry for that, but it's going to be important for us to understand the concept of electronic structure. So we have to talk about, first of all, waves. And we're going to concern ourselves with waves of light, but let's be more generic in our definition of what a wave is. So a wave is a progressive repeating disturbance from a point of origin. So we all understand the concept of water waves. So I throw a rock into the lake, and waves sort of slowly emanate out from the point at which the rock hit the water. And we talk about sound waves and how when I scream, I'm vibrating the air molecules, the mo molecules of air near my vocal cords, which vibrate, and then also vibrate the molecules of air outside my mouth, which vibrates all the molecules of air between my mouth and your ear, which vibrates the molecules next to your ear, drum which vibrates your eardrum which allows you to hear me scream. So, and then we also have light which also travels in waves. Now water waves and sound waves need some sort of medium to move through. So the water wave, you know, you need the water to sort of like transmit the wave. Same thing with sound is you need something to sort of like transmit those those waves. However, light, and the light that we're going to care about, which is known as electromagnetic waves, so it's actually light waves and magnetic waves, need no medium for propagation. So simple way of remembering this is that the light coming from the sun travels through the vacuum of space, no problem. So waves generically have a couple of different measured properties, which is what we're going to concern ourselves with. So if we consider a wave, we have a certain distance, or a length, if you will, from basically peak to peak or trough to trough. So one complete motion of the wave, that length is known as, is given the symbol lambda, known as the wave length. So wave length is this symbol of lambda. The other measured property of a wave is what is known as frequency. And that, that's the rate at which the wave goes through a particular point. We call that frequency. And that's given the symbol nu. I know it looks like a V, but that's actually a Greek letter pronounced nu. So the easiest way to define what frequency is, is imagine if you are standing at the dock and you throw a rock into the water. And then you look down and the wave starts hitting the post that the dock is in. And what you do is you measure how often a new wave hits the post of the dock. So how many times a wave hits that post is referred to as the frequency. So if I count how many waves, say there are three waves that hit it per second, that's the frequency, three waves per second. So the unit of frequency that we normally use is, it's literally a cycle per, it's usually a cycle per second, right? So that cycle is sort of like, you know, meaning one full motion of that wave. So we usually just sort of like drop the cycles because we just know that it we you know that it's a cycle because the numerator is never anything different. So we just sort of like drop it. So it's usually sort of reciprocal seconds, and we sometimes write it as seconds to the minus one. So a seconds to the minus one is what is known as a hertz, and its symbol is H Z. So if I have a wave that is moving such that it goes, it, if I stay at one point and I count how many times a wave goes by that one point and it goes there are five iterations of a wave five waves per second that is a frequency of five Hertz so five cycles per second is five Hertz so lambda is a wave length unit of length and frequency is a unit of per unit time so if I actually take my lamp my wavelength times my frequency I get a speed because it's a distance per unit time. So in a vacuum, electromagnetic radiation travels at the speed of light. So electromagnetic radiation, all electromagnetic radiation actually travels at the same speed. And that speed is known affectionately as the speed of light, which is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And is given the symbol C. So uh, yes, it says in a vacuum, and for our purposes in this course, the speed of light is considered a constant. Now, does all electromagnetic radiation travel at the speed of light here on Earth? No, not quite. 
because of interactions with other light and air and such, electromagnetic radiation moves at about 0.98 the speed of light. But for our purposes, it's close enough. So all electromagnetic radiation moves at the speed of light. Now, what do I mean by electromagnetic radiation? Well, you know it as light, right? So, but there are lots of other electromagnetic radiation that you're familiar with. So you are familiar with radio waves and microwaves and infrared radiation, visible radiation, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. So these are all very common forms of electromagnetic radiation, and they all travel in waves. You are most familiar with visible waves, but visible is an elect is a is a very narrow range of the electromagnetic spectrum. So here we have sort of low wavelengths, or I'm sorry, long wavelengths. So radio waves have very long wavelengths on the order of buildings and humans, and you'll notice at the same time for very long wavelengths, I have very small frequencies, because which makes sense because the frequency times the wavelength of all electromagnetic radiation is a constant. So as one goes up, the other must go down. So these are all electromagnetic waves. So wa radio waves having very long wavelengths have very small frequencies. And over here on the other extreme, gamma rays have extremely short wavelengths and they have very large frequencies. And so they're inversely proportional. So if I were to take any number here and multiply it by any number down there, I'm going to get that speed of light. So radio waves and microwaves and infrared are on the side of wavelengths greater than that of the visible range, and ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma rays on the other side. Now this is side of, I just want to point out that this is sort of a misrepresentation because it kind of shows all of these bands of radiation to be about the same width, which is very much not the case. And these are the very broad labelings of them. They're not they're not even. The visible spectrum, meaning what your eyeball is able to detect. So your eyeball is a radiation detector that is very good at seeing some very, very a very narrow band of wavelengths. And to the human eye, only about 0.0035% of the entire range of the electromagnetic spectrum can your eyeball actually detect. So the visible spectrum is actually quite narrow. So where this is going to help us is for, for our next thing we have to understand sort of like where these energies come from. Where do we get electromagnetic radiation? So we need to talk about this thing called a, a, quantized, a quantized world. So black body radiation is radiation that comes from an object when it's it's warm, right? So you give off a certain you give off electromagnetic radiation. We know it as infrared. So that's how we use infrared cameras. That's how we see humans at night because humans have a certain temperature, usually warmer than the ambient, and so that's how we can see you. If I get you really really hot, I can actually get you to glow certain colors. Just like when I take wood and I put it into a very hot fire, I can make it hot enough such that it's giving off giving off radiation of a particular color that I actually see. I can see it in that visible spectrum. I can see burning red coal. But even at lower temperatures, everything's sort of like giving off a certain it's giving off certain radiation. And again, it's a function of temperature. So when by extension Molecules are vibrating at all temperatures, and when they vibrate, they vibrate at very, very specific energies, right? So they vibrate at some certain rate. So think of, you know, a spring going in and out and in and out and in and out. And we can make that spring go in and out very slowly, or we can make it go, or it can go in and out very, very quickly. But it doesn't slowly ramp up. It goes from one particular rate to a very different rate very, very quickly, meaning that it vibrates either at this energy level or at this energy level. And let me give you a couple of other examples of things that are quantized. So the frets of a guitar. Here is Jimi Hendrix, and we have these frets of the guitar, and when you put your finger down in between two sets of frets, then 
you're setting the length of the string and you pluck it and it makes a certain sound. And then if you put your finger in between another set and you move it, you instantaneously go from basically one note to another note. So the notes on a guitar are quantized. Another thing that's quantized is the amount of change in your pocket. Right? So you always have some whole number amount of money in your pocket. So you could have 35 cents or you could go up to 52 cents, but at no point are you at 37 and a half cents. You go instantaneously from one amount to another amount and you don't have to be incremental about it. Where it's going to come into play for us is when we talk about electrons going from one energy level to another energy level. So electrons can only be in very specific energy levels. So they can go from the, the two energy level down to the one energy level, or the one energy level up to the three energy level, or the 87 energy level down to the 23 energy level. And go from one level to another level, but it doesn't sort of like slowly go, just stepwise from here to there. So the first law of thermodynamics says that the total energy in the universe is constant, but where it matters to us is when an electron is going from some high energy state down to a lower energy state, it's giving off some energy. It has to give off energy goes when it goes from a high energy state. So if when going from that two down to that one, it has to give off energy. And that energy, when an electron gives off that energy, it gives off a small amount of light. And that light that's given off, we call it in we call it a photon. So a photon, very loosey goosey is just a small increment of radiant energy. Just think about it as, okay, when light is traveling through space, what does it sort of like travel as? It travels as a photon of light. And the energy of a particular photon is equal to the frequency, nu, times h, which is a constant known as Planck's constant. And again, you don't have to memorize the value of c, you don't have to memorize the value of h, Planck's constant for my course. These are constants. There's no reason for you to memorize those. I, whenever you're taking a quiz for my course, you'll be given those those numerical values. So H is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. And remember, frequency is in units of per second. So if I take joules times seconds times a per second, then the unit I'll be left with is, is just simply joules. So now we realize that energy of a photon is frequency dependent. So blue light, which has a higher frequency, is more energetic than red light, which will give us issues when we start talking about how much energy is associated with a photon being absorbed. So lastly, here in this bottom is these two equations that we've talked about, is that the speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength of a photon of light, and the energy of a particular photon is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. And the reason why I take time to sort of like show this is to make sure you understand that if you're given any one of these big three, the energy or the frequency or the wavelength, you can, via these equations, go from one of them to any of the other ones. So if you're given the energy of a photon, you can calculate the frequency. If you're given the frequency of the photon, you can calculate the energy or you can calculate the wavelength. If you're given the wavelength, you can calculate the frequency. And of course, if you're given the wavelength, you can calculate the frequency and the energy, depending on which one you want. So as long as you know one of these, you can easily calculate the other two.